I wanted to start with a story that I wanted to share for you that I encountered a couple of years ago. I walked into my hometown of Valleck and I walked into the city center where I hadn't, hadn't been in there for years. And I looked around in that city center, which was used to be a very busy center in Valleck. But when I looked there, it was empty. Shops were closing, more shops were closing, less people were coming. And I just got a daughter, and I was thinking, if I see the difference between 30 years when I was a little child walking in that city center and my daughter 20 years from now, the question really is, is how is that world going to look like? And is there the way that we are moving now, is this the way how we want to be living in our society? I think that currently within the retail sector, within our real life, things are changing rapidly due to digitization, digitalization. Everything is changing. We are changing. We are communicating in a different way. And maybe not for the better. Connecting is really about people. It's about connecting with somebody physically by feeling them. But these days, most of our connections are going through WhatsApp and other online methods. This is changing our society so rapidly. And within 20 years, I think everything will be even more uh, changed. And the question really is that we are standing in front of today is, is this what we really want? These innovations that are driving our future in this online world, is this really what we want? I believe that 20 years from now, my little daughter should have an opportunity to be able to open up a store and sell flowers, to open up a store and sell books. But the way that the innovation is going today, the question really is, is, is this still possible, or 20 years from now, are we only able to open up our flower store on Amazon? <coughs> My story didn't start a few years ago, it started 20 years ago. I was a Y2K millennial kid, and I was the IT guy who fixed your printer. But I quickly started to innovate, and I first started to innovate on PC TV technologies called Media Center. And I quickly became one of the top five engineers in the world uh, for Media Center. I became an MVP, a most valuable professional, only to be hired by Microsoft a couple of months later to become their new IT pro uh, evangelist. And after three years and a lot of experiences and eight global awards later, I thought, you know what, is this really what the world's going to bring me? And I thought the world is bigger than this and I needed a bigger challenge than Microsoft. So I took my bags and I went to China. I didn't prepare anything, I just left. And I first went to Beijing and I went to Beijing to study Chinese. Seven weeks, intermediate level, full force studying, only to move to the other side of China, to Chengdu, to start my first company. Next Social. And with Next Social, I started to start up within Chengdu, a city of 15 million people where nobody speaks English, but has a lot of developers. And we started to build a social collaboration platform called WeConnect, one of my first products that I really built myself. And years went by, customers came, we built another product called the NPAD, the first iPad competitor in Holland, based on Windows, based on my old employee Microsoft. And after five, six years building up a startup and selling it, I thought it's time for a sabbatical. And I went to do what everybody is th uh, one day of the lives is thinking to do, but almost never does. I went to the Himalaya and I went to the Taoist monks, to the temples, to do basically what you see in the movie, seven years in Tibet, only seven months. Because I can tell you, winter in the mountains, it's, it's cold and wet. <laughs> And I was on the mountain being, trying to become Zen and learning the ways of the Taoist monks and learning to, be, uh, to, to step into the Tao. Unfortunately, in the mountains they have nothing at all, no supermarkets, but they have one thing and that's phone and internet because they have that everywhere in China. And I got a phone call if I wanted to become one of the European directors for Nikon for the digital cameras. And I actually said no, but then they made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So I went back to Holland and I started to innovate in digital. 
But a few years later, I stepped around to that shopping center and I thought, you know what, I'm innovating in the other side of the world, I'm innovating in Amsterdam, but should I, shouldn't I try to bring my innovation here to make real life impact? So I started to, my, my, my company, I called it Digital MKB, I thought, you know what, that's, that's a pretty name, I'm, I'm an IT guy, not a marketeer. And I thought, and I started to look around me, where can I add my value? And there's shopping centers. You've seen it in the news. Every week, a new company, a new retail shop is closing down because they forgot to innovate. They forgot to move on with the digital transformation. And that's hurting them now. From there, we try to solve different problems. You cannot solve one problem with one shop, with one retail shop. You have to take that a broader view, a bigger perspective on how we are going to change the way that uh, shopping is being experienced inside of the city centers as a whole. And we came with something called RetailCon. And this is one of the things that we believe is a mechanism to drive change. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Hugo Leikens. Our uh, talk today is about driving consumer behavior with blockchain. Blockchain and new technology. And you may have heard of it about blockchain. But for us IT guys, blockchain is a revolutionary new internet. It is something completely different. And I've made some slides here, a slide here, which is very, very complex. But it shows the differences from a technical perspective, from our current internet and the next level of internet. Our current internet, the internet of information, as we call it 2.0, you've all known and you've all experienced every day. And that information has, of the, the spread of information on the internet has made unlocked a numerous possibilities, but it also has some flaws. One of the things that happens with the internet of information is that every single thing that you do on that internet, every single photo that you send to your friend, you're making a digital copy of that file, of that document, of that photo. Blockchain changes this all. And it allows you to move something from A to B, keeping the original. And that is a very powerful new uh, way of looking at that information. If we can ship something from A to B without making a copy, that's the technology that we can use, for example, eCash. Because if I give you some money, I don't have that money anymore. You have that money. If you give it to me, then I have the money, then you don't have it anymore. And this is one of the functionalities that blockchain empowers. And we're not talking about HTTP and WWW that doesn't exist anymore. It is truly a completely different internet with different applications, but also with a different purpose. It's not about sharing information, it's the internet of value. The value transfer from A to B and how can you make, create something new out of it? Well, eCash may be one of the uh, uh, logical applications for this, and you've all known it in a form like Bitcoin. But it's definitely not the only application of blockchain. It was only the first. Blockchain has numerous applications. One of them is uh, identity. And you can imagine, if you look at your passport, that this is also a very interesting mechanism to identify yourself. So if you look at your passport and you go into a shop and you ask for uh, cigarettes or alcohol or something else, you need to identify yourself. You take out your passport, you give it to the woman behind the counter or the man behind the counter, they look at it. And they look at you and they go like, yes, you are Hugo. You are fine to take this along with me. Now, in a digital world, in the information the internet, we also have a mechanism called, uh, like that called Digi Day, but that doesn't identify you. It only validates that you are a record in the database. Nothing more, nothing less. But that's not what your passport does. Because nobody checks your passport if it's even a valid passport. If you have your passport, then that's it. Now, couldn't we make it more interesting from a digital perspective to put you back into control, not a central database? 
And identity and blockchain is one of the applications that we can use in order to make that happen. We can give you an identity, not somebody else. We don't give Facebook your all of our identities. We give you your personal identity. And you don't even have to share all the things that you don't want to share. What you can do is just say, listen, I'm over 18, I'm fine. And the other person doesn't need to know your name, only whether you are older than 18, or maybe that you have a driving license. But why should anybody see your driving license? Identity, definitely one of the most important things. Then the next step is value transfer. Now, we've all seen that in the last few years that there is definitely value on the internet of, of blockchain. We can move it from A to B, people are losing money, people are gaining money, but some value is in that middle. And that is being uh, made possible by the power of that blockchain. Now the question is, is if you look at that new technology, who is going to bring that new technology into our daily lives? Because today, when you look at a blockchain and everything else, it is really virtual, it is never in our real life, it is somewhere there, and uh, maybe you have done something with it, but if you have not actively done something with it, you have never done something with it. And that's because this new technology is so new, it is, it's 1995, basically. And this new technology is going to change our real lives, it's going to touch our real lives. How, when? We don't really know, because we're too early in the game. And a few companies have started to step up and take a look. How are we going to take this power of this decentralized new, uh, new internet and move that into the real world to empower consumers to be, get control back? Choices. And although blockchain has the power to change the complete world, you have to make your own choices on which part are we going to do, or at least are we going to try. Well, the first step that we see is that retail as a whole, it's not going well. So isn't it possible to integrate these new technologies into existing uh, companies and into existing ecosystems? And we think that is definitely possible. It's possible to create something with value and then make sure that you hand over that value to the consumer so they can experience an enhanced value based on their current actions that you already do today. Now, if we can do that, what else can we do? Well, actually, there's a lot of things that we can do. The next step that we could do is take a look at how are we going to integrate these values into mobility. Because this has a huge impact. One of the bigger impacts that it has, of course, is the uh, environment. So can we stimulate, with the help of blockchain, to, for people to don't get into the car, but take the bike a little bit more? And it doesn't have to change everything overnight. But if one person leaves that car and takes the bike, then that is already a win. Now, if we can make that one person two people, that's great. And if we can reach out to thousands and hundreds of thousands of people to reward them for not taking the car, then we're making impact. At the end of the day, I believe that we need to take this up to a little bit higher level. How can we uh, reward good behavior? How can we do that with the help of blockchain? This is the reason why we wake up every day in the morning. To take a look, if we can help this out. And we actually have found a way to make this happen. So, in the blockchain, you can create value out of nothing, basically. And that's called these coins that you have seen everywhere in the last few years. Now, if you, we would create one, and we would create one with value, and then hand that over to the, uh, to the, to the consumers, to the consumptions uh, that consumers do and reward them for the right uh, consumptions uh, to do. And not driven by us, but driven by everybody. We would be able to hand out virtual money to people that do specific things. 
Now, you may think this is so uh, no, no, untouchable, but we're going to make it very touchable. And I'm going to give you a specific use case for this. You will be able here in Tilburg, but also in Baalwijk and in the region, if you take a bike, you will be able to scan your card and actually get a drink just because you take your bike. Just because you don't take your car. Because you take an effort to take care of the environment. You take an effort to actually step into society. You take an effort not to do everything on your mobile phone, not everything by yourself individually, but together. And we believe that with the help of blockchain, we can change the behavior of, of, of people towards rewarding it for good. And we've seen more people taking a focus on this in their uh, meeting of this, this morning. There are some really good ideas coming together to make sure that people get rewarded for the behavior that is uh, wished for. And together we can change this uh, society into bringing something that is well, actually not so new at all. Bringing you back in control. And where most IT companies in the last 20 years have taken that control away from you, whether you have noticed or not, they have taken your privacy and they sell it to the highest bidder. They take your information and they use it to make more money. And this is also part of it, that this is a trend that will stop. This is a trend that people will not continue with because we, as people, will not keep on accepting it that other people make money out of us without returning that value back to us. And this is one of the trends that we are going to try to integrate. We also have a new term for that. We call it Offline 2.0. We want to bring people back into the offline world, but we understand that digital is not going anywhere. And we are looking towards a non-intrusive way to enable digital power to integrate into a real-life society. This is what we are doing every single day and to make the world, from our perspective, a little bit of a better place. Thank you.